Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reedy with Future Pastimes, and I'm a designer on the expansions for the classic Dune board game, the 2019 edition from Gale Force 9. And a lot of players and fans ask me what I think about the Dune movie uh, that came out in 2021, the Denis Villeneuve uh, take on Dune. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a capsule review talking about the film and what I like about it, any issues that I had with it. Uh, and so I think there's a lot to love about this version of Dune, Dune Part 1. Um, obviously, the uh, the production design of the sets and the costumes and all the props and equipment and uh, the ships and uh, ornithopters especially are all pretty fantastic. Uh, I think they did a great job with that. I really liked it. I think it was, in, in every regard, a step up from uh, previous productions of Dune. Um, one of the things that I appreciate a lot about this Dune movie is that they didn't feel like they had to do a ton of backstory and context. They just jump right into the story. Um, and I, I think it, it, they're taking uh, a chance that the audience is going to piece things together and they're going to, the stuff that's important to them, they're going to figure out. Um, I'll give you an example. You know, they don't really explain in any detail why if we're 10,000 years into the future and, and actually we're way more than 10,000 years in but whatever um, why there are, aren't more guns why is everybody using knives seems like it would be kind of silly and a little bit primitive that far into the future but the clues are there um, the scene with the shield practicing and you can see the shields in action against a projectile weapon um, I think audiences have figured out that guns are not as effective as they are currently because, uh, you know, the slow blade is what penetrates the shield. And so I think they're able to piece that together. And when you see the Fremen are using Mala pistols and lace guns, um, you know, you know, it's because you don't use shields out in the desert. And Kynes even says that it's almost like a throwaway line. Um, but again, I think, I think audiences are going to figure it out, and, and if they don't figure it out, they're not going to dwell on it. So I, I appreciated that sort of thing. You didn't get all the little voiceover inner thoughts um, that were all over the Lynch movie, um, which I didn't have a problem with when I saw that uh, back in the 80s, uh, because all of that dialogue is right out of the book, even if it is thoughts. Um, but it wasn't really necessary, and I don't think anybody really misses it in the Villeneuve movie, so... Um, I, I like that. I think they they treat the audience uh, like adults and say, look, this is a, a grown-up movie for grown-up people. Yes, kids can enjoy it, but we're not going to dumb it down uh, because we're worried that somebody's not going to understand why something is happening. So um, I, I like that. And it adds a little bit to the mystique overall of that whole universe. So uh, I like that. Um, I, I thought it was a pretty a good idea for them to not bother introducing Fade. There's so many characters that they're trying to introduce in a short amount of time, even though it's a two-hour-plus movie. It could have been much longer, and I think maybe should have been. But um, I, I, for a while, I was worried that it wasn't going to be a Fade, and I would have felt like that was a mistake. But I, I, I think it was good for them to hold them back, and they didn't show the Emperor or Irulan. Uh, although they are they are mentioned, the emperor is mentioned in a couple of different uh, times. Um, it's mentioned that the emperor has no sons, has daughters, so you're getting those seeds planted. Um, but it, there's no need to introduce those characters in the first movie. So I thought that was a pretty good choice. I really liked the take on how they were depicting prescience, um, you know, and it's it's possible paths of the future and. Um, I really liked the way that that was handled. I loved all of the wisdom of Jamis teaching Paul the ways of the desert, but it turns out that that's actually not going to happen and um, how his uh, duel was going to uh, play out. Um, as and, and the more he was exposed to spice, the more he was getting these kinds of flashes and insights. So I, I really appreciated that. I really liked the way that that was handled. I look forward to a lot more of how they're going to look at prescience because that is going to just get more powerful for Paul um, the more that he is uh, saturated with the spice and 
integrated into the Fremen society and uh, embracing his possible Kwisatz Haderach status. So I think that's going to be pretty interesting to uh, watch unfold. And uh, it's always a tricky thing to try to pull off something that that's that ambiguous in the book. And uh, I think I think that they've made the right approach. Um, I love all the action. Uh, I, I thought it was great. Um, I thought that the casting was fantastic. I really enjoyed seeing everyone come to life uh, right off of the pages. Um, didn't really have an issue with any of that. Didn't have a problem with them gender swapping Liet Kynes. Uh, didn't have any impact on the story. Um, they didn't really do any connection uh, from Kynes to Chani. Um, and it, probably they won't. It seems like uh, they won't bother with that. Um, they they kind of did in the Lynch movie with Chani saying daughter of Liette, um, but they didn't really, you know, Dr. Kynes wasn't really like, I'm Liette Kynes. It was, wasn't a really clear connection. So it was almost like they didn't bother connecting that either. Um, like I didn't mention it, like, sorry, Chani, that your father was found dead in the desert. <laughs> Just, you know, it didn't really play into it. I think the one area, though, that I did have a, a quibble with, and, and it's, you know, it ties into things like they didn't show the banquet scene, which I was really looking forward to. Part of me was really looking forward to it, though, as, as a designer, just to see more characters. It would certainly make working on the movie Dune version of Dune, uh, Dune Conquest, uh, easier to have more characters and leaders uh, involved. But that's a selfish reason to, uh, to uh, complain about that. But the real reason that I am complaining is... For me, it feels like that the Atreides are on Arrakis for two days before the Harkonnen swoop in. And um, that's just not, you know, they were on Arrakis for a while before they had to deal with that. And, uh, but it just felt so rushed. And it's it's hard when you've got so much material and only so much time and all of the big set pieces, like the, uh, the scene where they go out in the ornithopters to uh, rescue the harvester uh, crew, that's a great set piece. It's important because it establishes Shia Lu, it establishes a lot of other things, um, stuff like that. The shield training practice scene with Gurney and Paul, that's kind of an important scene. You got to have that in there. Um, you got to have a lot of other stuff that's that's setting up things for the second movie. It's pr it is providing the context that the audience does need. So yeah, if you don't want it to be a four hour movie, <clears throat> which is crazy talk, but I know, but you do have to trim things down and you have to truncate it and uh, speed up some of the stuff. I kind of felt like at the end of the movie, the uh, Paul and Jessica journeying through the desert looking for the Fremen was much longer than it really needed to be. Uh, I mean, if, if it were going to be a, a much longer movie, I would have been happy to have those scenes in there. But, you know, Paul walking along and imagining he's seeing Duncan sitting around watching them with a couple of Fremen guys. We didn't need that shot. It didn't doesn't really do anything uh, for us. It doesn't move the story along. Um, would have liked to have pulled some of that time from the end of the movie and put it back into the middle of the movie. Maybe you do have uh, an oblique reference to the uh, the banquet scene, a uh, little bit more than the, where Dufer tries to resign and Jessica's wearing a red dress and that's that's it. That's our that's our oblique reference. <clears throat> Wanted a little bit more just to make it feel like, you know, more than uh, two days went by uh, on Arrakis while the Atreides were there. It was just so rushed. So that was my that was really my only complaint was that movie wasn't long enough. And uh, that segment there in the middle uh, just happened too quickly. And. Again, I understand why it was like that, but um, uh, I, I'm still holding out hope that we will uh, one day get uh, an extended release, uh, whether it's a, you know, an HBO special event or <clears throat> re-released in theaters, uh, Return of the King style, or uh, some kind of DVD cash-in. Uh, you know, shut up and take my money, right? So. Uh, what am I looking forward to in the second movie? Well, uh, I'm looking forward to them building up Fade and uh, showing them he, he's a threat. I think based on some of the images that have leaked, uh, we, we are going to see the arena scene, which was one of my favorite scenes 
in the book. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm hoping that we are still going to get a Count Fenring. It, it doesn't seem like it right now because they still haven't announced anybody. And maybe they're just going to have uh, Lady Fenring play that role. Um, I think they're missing out on a couple of uh, interesting plot points, not just another character that we want to have to sh depict in a game. Um, I, I was not crazy about Christopher Walken as the as the Emperor, but not that I don't like Christopher Walken. I, I think he's great, so I'm sure that it'll work out uh, all right, um, and that and that's fine. So I, in some ways, I am looking forward to seeing how, how that uh, plays out, and. Um, you know, the, the blowing the shield wall. I, I'll be curious to see how that uh, turns out. Uh, I thought one of the like, many, many quibbles I had was some weird edits in the movie. So like when they're flying the ornithopters into Arakeen for the first time and Hawat says, that's the shield wall, protects you from the storm and the worms. And then they cut to the wall around the city, which is not the shield wall. And um, you would think that somebody who is immersed as Villeneuve is in Dune and you know there's a map <laughs> of Arrakis right in the book and it shows the shield wall as a giant rock territory that is not immediately adjacent to Arakeen um you know look at the Dune board games we we, we spell it out for you right there I uh, would think that uh, you know take advantage of, of that tool that's been around for 40 years um so that was a weird edit. Uh, it'll be curious to see if they decide that that is the shield wall. And when they use atomics to blow it, are they going to blow up half the city? Is that is that their plan? I don't know. It seems kind of weird. Um, and the and the other one was when, you know, when they're looking at the, uh, the spice uh, containers and talking about how they have to fill them up every month. And then uh, Hawat, they're talking about kinds. And Hawat says, oh, he's here. And, um, you know, every, everyone thinks, oh, kinds is here. That's great. That's who we were talking about. That's just as a bad edit. You know, maybe you say he's back or whatever. But that's if that's all I can complain about. Well, that's a pretty good movie, and I, and I do. I've watched it I think six times now. Um, <clears throat> only once in the theater. I did see it in the theater. I saw it in the theater when it came out, and then I went home and because I have HBO, and I immediately watched it again. Uh, and and I've had to watch it, of course, for my work. Um, but uh, I'm lucky because it's actually something that I would have watched that many times anyway. So, um, I will, I'm hoping that they release it in IMAX right before part two comes out. Um, cause I would like to see it in IMAX and then watch part two in IMAX as well. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. I think it's going to be great. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to like part two better than part one, the first half of Dune it's always my favorite half of the book. Uh, I just love the Hunter Seeker scene and the Gamjabar box scene and, uh, you know, the attack on uh, Arakeen from the Harkonnens. Um, those are all among my favorite set pieces in Dune. Um, there's stuff I like in part two, of course, and I like the whole book a lot, but uh, everyone involved in the production is dutifully said that part two is better than part one so we'll see uh, i will definitely come back after that and render my own judgment so that's it for this uh video let me know uh your thoughts on dune what did you like about it what did you wish had been different commiserate with me about the banquet scene of course uh any any other quibbles that you have um let's get into it and uh that's it for this one we'll see you again soon